Oh, hey guys. So I'm out here we're doing some watering right now because it is like 77 degrees today and the plants could really use a drink, especially in this area. This is a rather dry area in our garden because we have a very large maple right here. So maples are very water hungry plants, well trees, so they're going to um, soak up a lot of the available water. Plus this is kind of like on an incline and uh, well, it also needs some cleanup. So you wouldn't know this area is too bad because of all the beautiful daffodils blooming, but they're pretty drought tolerant since they're a bulb plant. Um, but what we've done is I planted some, um, I can't remember, this is a switchgrass of some kind. It's a blue switchgrass that does really, really well over here. Um, and then I've also just placed our bird bath right over here, um, which needs filled up. It also needs a new top made. This is made out of hypertufa, and this was from a friend a few years ago. Um, when they um, closed down their garden and moved out um, of the area so obviously they couldn't take it um, because they were downsizing so they were very nice and gave this to me So while this is filling up, I kind of just want to go over what we're going to be doing today. Um, obviously I need to do some cleanup. Some leaves got in here that we didn't get a chance to um, clean up. So I'm going to blow those out as well. And I've got some plants that I want to plant in here. Now the display is beautiful. These are ice folly daffodils that we planted up last fall. Um, and then actually the ones behind me in these areas were here when we purchased the house. So um, I was fortunate enough to see those that spring and then be able to mass plant some more in, which these are good at naturalizing. Well, I did these by whole, like individual holes, got tired of doing that, dug some trenches and planted in some bigger drifts. So I like those a lot more than the sporadic ones, but these ones will fill out over time. Along the front, I have some juniper. It is a variegated juniper that's blue and with a yellow chartreuse edge. Um, I cannot remember the name. I'll place it on the screen once I find it for you. But I also feel like um, they need, we need some more fill through here. In the meantime, while we're waiting for these guys to grow and fill in the area, these are supposed to get about six feet wide and only about two foot tall. Um, so they're not gonna take up too much height and we're gonna be working on that in the back here. We have some nine barks, these are Amber Jubilee. Um, unfortunately, they are not happy over here. They're surviving, they need a major trim, and they need to go somewhere else. They need somewhere with more water because I just can't keep up with it, and I'm not gonna be tugging out this hose every time in order to give them the drink, and I'm not gonna be running irrigation either because I feel like it's better to work with your yard than against your yard and waste. Now, we are on a well, so it's not necessarily wasting, but it does cost money to run your well pump in order to get water out here. And frankly, it's better just to get everything established and let mother nature take care of it. I don't mind dragging it out once every couple weeks to give them a supplemental water or if we're in really, really um, drought conditions. But other than that, um, I should not be watering in the spring to give them a little bit of a drink to get started, but it has been extremely dry and extremely abnormally warm. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you some of the plants that we're gonna be planting in here and we will get into it now. are some of the plants that I picked up actually recently. These were hit by frost at my local Lowe's. Um, they were $4 a piece. These are called Clifford Moore Catch Fly. They bloom a pink flower, but I love the variegated look. These are drought tolerant. They are hardy from to zone four, um, non hardy in one through three. I don't know why they hurt. tell us that. Um, water, keep moist for the first year, once per week from there. Um, these get about 15 to 18 inches tall. You should space them about 
12 inches, which is nice because then they will combine in and give you a nice carpet. And then I also have some tulips. Now these are forced ones that I picked up at um, my local Walmart, believe it or not, for a dollar a piece. Now these are supposed to be purple. Um, a few of the bulbs that I did purchase, especially the hyacinths, um, were supposed to be certain colors such as pink, and I got a gypsy queen and I'm not mad about that because you can see next to our patio um, I planted a nice big swath and we'll show you that over here of them and they smell amazing and look how beautiful they are they are like this peachy orange and like a little bit of pink in the center there I absolutely love them. So I'm not complaining that I got an extra one to go in my big drift. Um, we still have un not done our patio yet to get that established and this urn was just here for um, looks um, for um, outside the bathroom window when we were doing renovation. So this won't be staying here either. I have plans for a tree. But this is what we're gonna plant. I know it's not like crazy amount of plants, but these will give us some variegated texture and um, through here and then I want to place these daffodils just kind of in between, not the daffodils, they're tulips. Remember we bought tulips. Um, I want to place these tulips just kind of in here and about just to bring some extra color once the fall ice follies do go away. Um, they do bloom for a very long time but it's better to have more bulbs than no bulbs, right? We love spring. So this is kind of the area we're working with and I will show you how I'm going to lay these out and we will get to planting. still in the pots but I mean look at that color um, so I placed a number of them over there there's seven tulips over here there and there are five over here I like to keep it nods now these I did buy six of because that was all they had on the clearance rack were six of them but Clifford Moore likes drought it does not like to sit in water so I figured this would be a great candidate it loves blazing sun. Another common name for this is Maltese Cross. This is just a pink variegated version. So if you're familiar with that plant, it should um, be easy to find. This is probably one of the more common ones I see every year. So I figured, eh, what? why not? $4 a plant, give it a shot. Using some Biotone starter fertilizer. Um, I clearly had this bag for a little bit. Actually, the store that I bought it from is no longer around. I've had it sitting and I've been using other bags and forgot I had this one sitting back on um, my storage um, storage bin in the shed. So I'm gonna be using this, getting these in, and we'll give them a good drink to get them established. And can't wait to see what they look like in the ground.
actually died yesterday. I was not watching Battery Life, but I did get all the um, catch fly planted up. I got the tulips in the ground here. Um, and that's pretty much it for right there. I'm going to go ahead and blow this area out. Um, I'm not too worried about it right now, so I might just wait until after, after the daffodils are done so I don't blow their beautiful heads off. Um, but I'm thinking that I might up this way a little bit. So we have to finish our, our fence. This will be a gate area. Um, but there are two, uh, what are these? Russian sage. And then there's some grass up there, which I'm not sure is going to come back. We'll see. But I was thinking about planting a small drift of um, coral punch dianthus. So let me grab those and show you what they look like. So I've got some dianthus coral punch here, and these are absolutely beautiful. Um, again, a plant that was on clearance that I picked up. These were hit by frost. I did some cleanup, and they severely need a drink. Um, I've been a really bad plant dad starting out, um, but they're about to get planted and saturated with water. So I picked these up for $4. This is Fruit Punch Classic Coral by Proven Winners. Um, they should. These get full sun. They like drought. They don't like a lot of water. These get only 8 to 10 inches tall. Um, you should space them between um, 12 and 14 inches wide. And there's hardy from zones 4 to 9. So these bloom from early summer and rebloomer in early fall. Obviously, these have been forced to bloom um, a little bit early, you know, for spring planting. But they, and they smell they smell so so good and being that this is the back door and this is where I mostly enter and exit from as the garden season starting because we're spending time out on our patio and such these would be nice to be able to see these so again this area is quite full sun all day despite having a tree canopy over the sun just hits it in the right spot so I think these are gonna look really really good right about in this area so I've got five five of them and then I'm gonna place them out and then we're gonna get them planted <music> Clearly, these poor guys are so sad. They're not holding their heads up, but I just want to show you these blooms. They're absolutely beautiful. I am actually not a fan of Dianthus by any means, and these just captivated me. And there's a few more varieties that I wouldn't mind getting, and the fact that they're drought tolerant makes them a great fit for this area because, we, like we've mentioned, we have this very large maple tree up here that um, is 
quite the water hog, but I think we'll take a step back. Mind the mess, people. Mind the mess. Set up here. I think this is going to look really great. Now that we have the dianthus here, we'll have the junipers filling in later on. Um, just some late blooming tulips, hopefully, that we'll see. We'll see how they do. And then the catch fly. I think my next step is, because we talked about how we have grass back here, um, I want to maybe go ahead and add in some taller perennials, such as um, the native pink cone flowers, maybe even doing some, and I'm going to butcher this name, they're blue globe thistle, and I'm not even going to try to remember what the Latin name is, but I think those would be really great with the silver foliage and then the daisy lake flowers. My only concern about adding the cone flowers, even though I just added these and those, is is there too much pink in this area? Um, so it's something that we're gonna have to think about. Maybe we'll find a different variety. Maybe we'll do white. I don't know, but I'm really happy to see some new fresh faces over here. And I can't wait to see these uh, Martian sage bush out a little bit more with the grass over here. Um, these are railroad ties that we were given um, and we're just using it to basically keep a blocker from the fence and then all of our mulch and such going into the property, which is next door, which is an office building. Uh, but like I said, we're gonna have to move these um, nine barks. I don't think they're going to be loving this much more. I mean, they're just holding on. Um, there's a lot of dieback this year, which is not good for the plant. Uh, it just means that it's stressed. So right place, uh, right plant for the right place and this was not the right place so we'll get them moved out into something a little bit better that maybe holds a bit more moisture but let me move my stand here we'll give you a pan out this angle kind of show you just how pretty Just how good this area looks. Just a few more fresh flowers in there. Uh, I cannot wait. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed just coming along and seeing some new plants be placed in the ground. I know I'm excited and I'm just happy to be back out in the garden like most of us are. Um, if you guys have some ideas of some plants that could go back here uh, along the fence line, I'm thinking maybe some uh, winter interest, maybe it's more like um, Arborvitaes or some emerald green giants to mask this lovely building we have here. Um, but I was also thinking of placing yet another tree down here at the corner. Um, I do have a paper bark river, uh, river birch that does need a new home, so I'm thinking maybe that might be a good spot for it. Um, and then we can see the winter interest on that as well from the bark. Uh, but again, throw me some ideas what you think and let me know what you think of the flower bed as it's coming along. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.